speaker uh, is uh, uh, Jane Lampley, who is a graduate student in the uh, biology department, uh, working with uh, uh, myself uh, and Dr. Triplett and uh, Dr. Mwadi. And this particular project is focusing on an aspect of the chemistry. So, uh, you can see it's dragging me because of two reasons. One, we are fighting over the student. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Jane is a very thorough, you know, student. I've had her for a number of years. She graduated from JSU. She's in his lab doing an excellent job with the biology, and she loves chemistry enough to try and swing something into that biology project that she has. So, I can't wait to hear the story. At least y'all are still in the fight. I tried to steal her for math, and I lost that a lot. You can win that she one. She can do everything. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for coming today. And um, so this is part of my thesis project, and this is the chemistry side. It's called the Phytochemical Analysis of the Medicinal Plant Polygonated by Farm and Allies in the Southeastern United States. So polygonatum is a genus with 57 species in the Asparagaceae family. The common name for a lot of them is Solomon seal. They're medicinal and edible. I mean, the stem is edible in the ones that I know of. Um, they are native from Boreal to warm temperate areas of North America, Europe, and Asia. There's 39 species in the genus polygonatum in China, five in Europe, and three in North America. And I'm going to focus on two species that occur in the southeastern United States, polygonatum biform and polygonatum pubescens. So there are three varieties, actually, of polygonatum biform. Variety biform, which is known as small Solomon seal, it inhabits this area right here. And it, it lives mainly in moist forests. And um, the second variety is commutatum or King Solomon seal. And the difference between biform and commutatum is that this one is a tetraploid, which means the chromosome is double, and also it can grow up to six to seven feet tall, whereas the small one is about two feet tall, about or smaller. And it grows in pretty much the same place except that it likes roadsides and sunshine. And the third variety is Hibetifolium or Apalachicola Solomon seal, which is only found in the panhandle of Florida and was too rare to be used in this portion of my study. And the second species occurring in the southeast is a more northern species, as you can see. It only occurs just at the northern part of Alabama, and it's uh, Polygonatum pubescens or Hairy Solomon seal, and it looks pretty much like biform, except that it has downy hairs and underside leaves. So the rhizome is a thick, knotty, creeping rhizome, and it has these circular seals on it, which was said to look like the ancient wax seal of King Solomon, who was known for his wisdom and his knowledge of plants. And so you can count these seals on the plant, which occur every year as the, um, the stem dies back in the winter. It breaks off and it leaves this seal, and you can know how old the plant is by the number of seals. Um, this plant has been made into a root tea, uh, a poultice, an alcohol extract, an oil-based root sap, all different ways that you can use the rhizome medicinally. Um, it's been used in many different medicinal systems from ancient Roman to Chinese to Ayurvedic, Indian, European, and Native American medicine. And there's many herbalists who say that this plant is very, very special, very important. And as you can see, this long list, which we don't have time to go into, it, it does a lot of different things. Arthritis, high blood pressure, a rejuvenation tonic, lung ailments, damaged tendons, ligaments, muscles, and bones. It's just a really interesting plant. So a lot of research <coughs> has been done on the European and Asian species of polygonatum. But the North American species, which are also medicinal, um, have not been as well studied. So my objectives were to analyze the phytochemical content of the native varieties of this plant in the southeast and to determine whether geography and taxonomic variety influence the levels of the phytochemicals produced. 
and I wanted to better understand the potency and medicinal properties of North American flea native species, as well as to help reconstruct the evolutionary history of these plants. So these plants were collected um, from all the way from Alabama to Ohio, and you can see all of these blue balloons are the different places where I have populations, 59 different populations from Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky. And they were harvested responsibly and grown under equal conditions in the JSC greenhouse out here. And then they were harvested this past summer for processing. And this is how we make the alcohol extract of the rhizomes. You first wash them, grind them into a powder, freeze them, freeze dry them, and then to make the extract, we, we weigh them out, put, put them in 80% methanol, vortex and centrifuge, and put them on a shaker machine for three days, centrifuge again, and vacuum filter. I had to restrict this study to just four different regions where we had um, at least two sympatric varieties, meaning that two of the different varieties were living in the same place. And that was Gunnersville, which had three different varieties, or all three of my varieties. Scottsboro, which had two. Rome, Georgia, which had two. And Hawking County, Ohio, which had two. The first, the first thing I did was a chemical screening test. And I did a saponin test, flavonoid test, glycoside test, alkaloid test, triterpenoid test, and steroid test. And we tested positive in our rhizomes for saponins, flavonoids, and glycosides. And these are all different classes of compounds that have um, pharmacologic properties and are naturally occurring in plants. Then I did two more um, extensive chemical techniques. One is called FRAP, which is, stands for Ferric Reducing Antioxidant Power, which measures antioxidant levels. Um, what happens is one of the reagents is iron chloride, and you have, in the presence of antioxidants in your sample, um, a change or a reduction from ferric chloride to ferrous chloride, and this indicates a transfer of electrons. Um, the sample extracts were put into the reaction flask and they made up 6.7% of the solution. And we measured them on a UV bin spectrophotometer at 595 nanometer wavelength at 15 minutes. And we calibrated with ascorbic acid standards. The second method, bolin chicato colorimetric method, measures total phenolic content. And phenols are a class of chemical compounds which have a hydroxyl group bonded to an aromatic hydrocarbon. And these are also common in plants and have antioxidant activity. So they are a subset of antioxidants. Um, and this method works by um, measuring phenols in your sample by measuring a blue pigment that results from the oxidizing of the phenols. And you can measure this also on the UV bis spectrophotometer at 765 nanometer wavelength, but this time at 30 minutes and we calibrated um, with gallic acid standards this time. Here's an example of what our spectra look like when you run it on the, the spectrophotometer. And as you can see, here's the baseline. And once you start that reaction, you start to measure that blue pigment right here at 595. And this top one is the peak absorbance at um, 15 minutes. And we take this number and use it to compare different samples. This one is Scottsboro by form. All right, and so for our results. This slide shows all three varieties that came from Gunnersville. So on the left we have by form versus commutatum versus pubescence. These are very close in antioxidant levels. But as you can see, this one is significantly different. The pubescence has outperformed in terms of antioxidant levels. This is at Rome, Georgia. In this case, the biform on the left is significantly higher than the commutatum. This one is Scottsboro, Alabama. Biform on the left, much higher than the commutatum there on the right. And this is Hawking County, Ohio. Biform on the left and pubescence on the right. There's really not 
very much difference between these two. Now this combines all the five farm from the four different regions. And as you can see, Scottsboro wins in antioxidant levels, and Gunnersville is in the last place. And these two are, are very close in the middle. This one compares the commutatums. Um, this time Rome had the highest levels. Gunnersville again had the lowest. And this one compares all the pubescents that I had. Um, on the left, Gunnersville, much lower than the, on the right, Hawking County, Ohio. And this puts them all together. So I've got Gunnersville's together. In Ohio, you can compare all the varieties from the same place together at the same time. And this gives you another representation. Scottsboro by form definitely outcompeted everything. And Gunnersville by form is in the last place. Then I decided to further break down one variety within one region by habitat to see if there were some locational differences. So this is at Gunnersville, it's all pubescence, but this is on one side of the park, the state park on a trail that happened to have a little bit more sun, it was near the lake, it was open wood, it's a little bit more air could get into it. And this one on the right was a really dense shaded dry sort of forest area. And you can see there's definitely significant difference between these two spots. And this compares all of the Rome um, plants. We've got biflorums and commutatums together. And I put them in order from least to highest, and they group out naturally. The lowest ones were from Black's Bluff, which was a low place near a creek um, on a roadside. Shady, but it got a little bit of sun. And the ones that were higher we're up on Lavender Mountain, which was a higher elevation. Um, might have been a little bit more shade, and it was on a roadside also. For my Folin Jacalto analysis, again, we have Gunnersville, um, the three varieties. Again, Batorm is least in pubescence, is higher, although this time Kamitata is very close. Uh, again, Batorm wins in Scottsboro. And in Rome, again, by Dorm wins their own left. And again, in Hawking County, Ohio, these two varieties are very much similar. Now, putting the four populations together, comparing the variety by Dorm, um, we have Scottsboro again in the lead, these two in the middle, and Gunnersville in fourth place. Comparing the commutatives, Rome is in the lead, but very close to Gunnersville. And, and this time Scottsboro was very low on the time. And comparing pubescence, Ohio again beats Gunnersville. So um, this is essentially the same as the one you saw before, but this time it's the Folin Chicago method, which was showing total phenolic content. And in general, if you average them out, Ohio seems to be the highest all told altogether, and then followed by Scottsboro, followed by Rome, followed by Gunnersville. And this is again breaking down by local habitat differences. Uh, again, low elevation versus high elevation. And um, this one is near a creek in dense woods on the left versus in the sunshine on the roadside on the right. And as you can see, these two methods um, corroborated each other. They, um, this one is measuring um, ascorbic acid or the um, antioxidant levels, and this one's measuring phenolic content. But these are each individual specimen that I had, and this maps out very closely together. And this also. I've got the bifolarms together, the commutatums together and the pubescence together with both of the two different methods. And in general, biflorum wins, except in the case of Gunnersville, followed by pubescence and then followed by commutatum in the least. So my conclusions are that all the varieties do have significant amounts of phenols and antioxidants. 
And second, that both methods show significant differences in the phytochemical content among the plant varieties used in the study. Also, both methods show dif significant differences in the phytochemical content among plants of different regions. And further differences can sometimes be found between different locations within each region. And also, both methods, Graf, Anvil, and Chicalto, compare very well in their quantification of the phytochemical content of the samples involved in the study. So I want to thank Dr. Levy and Dr. Triplett and JSU and um, all the people listed here. Does anyone have any questions?